Good morning, everyone. Let us pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this morning, Lord. Thank you for a new day. It's the day after Christmas. And Father, thank you that we can just this mo morning come and sit at your feet, listen to your word, and hear what message you have for us. Bless our togetherness this morning, Father, and give us a message out of your heart. Amen. It's today the day after Christmas, as I said in my prayer. Christmas is a celebration of his, Jesus who were born. But for many people, especially for children, it's about all the trimmings, the lights, the excitement, the gifts, the tradition of Saint Nicholas, who gave poor children gifts. For us, many times, it is about getting the right gift for every person in our family. Everything is closing in December, coming to a standstill. Children is writing letters to Santa Claus about what they want, how sweet they were during this year. They cannot wait for Christmas Eve to get all their gifts. The true gift of Christmas is actually Jesus. And I want to read for us this morning out of the book of Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10. For it was fitting for him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons to glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. For both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all of one, for which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of assembly I will sing praise to you. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, here I and the children whom God has given me, Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is, the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For indeed he does not give aid to angels, but he does give aid to the seed of Abraham. Therefore, in all things, he had to be made like his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make proposition for the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered, being tempted, he is able to aid those who are tempted. You see, in this chapter, God sent Jesus to us. And there's a movement here from God to us. God speaks to us through the Son. From Him radiates the glory of God and He's the likeness of the essence of God. And let us look at this movement. For a short time He was made less than angels that He might die for the grace of God for all. Chapter 2 verse 9. Jesus is the leader who brings us to perfection through salvation, through suffering. Chapter 2, verse 10. I will make your name known to my brothers and sisters. Verse 12. He became human just like us. He became like us in every way. Verse 17. Hebrews actually tells us why we celebrate Christmas. Through this movement from God to us, we are Jesus' brothers and sisters. Jesus is not ashamed to call us that. Through Jesus, we became part of God's family. It's a beautiful the theology. But I wonder, do we realize what this means? It has a radical implication for how we think about our salvation. 
We have all our own ideas, perceptions about faith. What is faith? What is the purpose of faith? But the problem is that our way of thinking about faith can be very toxic. Our thinking about faith can leave us discouraged. Because if faith is about you, if the action is in faith with you, then it is shaky. If faith is about your choice for God, a will decision on your part, this can blow apart very easily. Especially when the stormy winds of life comes. If it depends on the energy with what you cling to God, it can end in disaster. But, but Hebrews jubilantly calls the opposite. Jesus came to us. He became human. He suffered by the grace of God, died for our sins. He, He, Jesus, saves us. He holds us. He carries us. And He intercedes for us with God. In connect, that is what our faith must be based on in the next year. Not our choice for God, but on the factual reality of what Jesus had already done. And the fact that we have given to God through Jesus our lives. And this is a reality, not only for our salvation, but every day of life. When forces come and you are in a dump, you are negative, you want to give up, he gives us courage and strength. Jesus says, here I am with the children of God, he has given me. Jesus has a responsibility for us. There can be no greater comfort and certainty. That you were given to Jesus. I want to say to you today. Brothers and sisters in this year that come. Advent said to us this Christmas time. Told us that Jesus came to us. The movement from God. But there's also a promise. There's a promise that. In this assurance this morning of Hebrews that we need to cling to Jesus in our faith. In expectation that one day he will also come back to this broken earth. To come and repair and heal what is broken with us. In this year let us, let us go forth with this vision that yes 25 December is Christmas. There's a promise that Jesus is coming back. That Jesus, God has sent him to us and for us to guide us on this journey. To make a difference in people's lives. To support other people in this journey that we call life. And may this be our encouragement in this year to come. May Christmas remind us. Of this movement. God to us. Not something that we need to do. And we fail so many times in our faith. And feel bad about it. But thank God. Jesus is there. To journey with us. Let us take courage. In this. Amen. Father thank you for your word. Thank you Father that you has given us Jesus. And Lord, although we try our best, our best can never be good enough. And for that we say thank you, thank you Jesus, that we can only live by faith, by the knowledge that you are the King, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Amen.
Thank you.